So Enoch Burke now seeks the intercession of three Church of Ireland clerics on the matter of the Church's stance on transgenderism, with the hope of possibly substantiating his claims and his case and backing him up. Now to get a clear and concise picture of what Enoch Burke is up against, first look towards the head of the snake that is the Church of England, the Mother Church to the Church of Ireland, and both part of the same worldwide Anglican Communion. Just look at what the Anglican Church accepts within its ministry and its leadership. You got a diesel dyke here LARPing as a priest. Then you got a male to shemale demonic looking tranny freak also LARPing as a priest. You got this gay married bishop. And then you got a feminist bishop. Now what could possibly go wrong? And here in Ireland, you have this so-called priest. She's praying for the efficacy of an abortion-infused poison. It's been an exciting week, hasn't it? To hear something positive in terms of vaccine possibilities. Although we all know it's going to take time to roll out. Now, Enoch Burke, as an evangelical, ought to have raised the issue some years ago when Wilson's Hospital raised on its grounds the globalist flag of sodomy and child grooming. Also as an evangelical, he's predisposed to uh, frown upon women in ministry, yet he chose to work under the patronage of female bishop Patricia Storey, which by his own biblical teaching is considered a heresy. Undoubtedly Mr Burke's reasoning for compromising such issues in order to take a post as a teacher at Wilson's was a case of ABC, anything but Catholic. Now to quote a crude but entirely accurate piece of prose by Brendan Behan. The Church of Ireland, via the Church of England, was born in the bollocks of Henry VIII, making it a fake church, which for a while rode the coattails of the Catholic Church. But nowadays the Church of Ireland has been whittled down into what's essentially an Irish subculture, engaged in ancestor worship with a church-shaped building as its clubhouse. One major appendage to the Church of Ireland is Freemasonry, which share with the church members, parochial halls and hymns or odes, one of which could be heard at the beginning here. Freemasonry and the Church of Ireland are inextricably linked. Where there's Freemasonry, there's Church of Ireland. And where there's Church of Ireland, there is Freemasonry. This brings us to Enoch Burke's issue with the chairman of the board of Wilson's Hospital School, whom he has named on several occasions as John Rogers. Now, John is a member of Mullingar and Granard Masonic Lodges. John Rogers came to attain the position of chairman after having been interviewed by the previous chairman of Wilson's, Nigel Foley Fisher who's also a member of the Masonic Order and who holds the esteemed title of Right Worshipful Provincial Grand Master of the Provincial Grand Lodge of South Connacht, which is based out of Athlone Lodge. And Nigel Foley Fisher is also a preacher in the Church of Ireland, and he can be seen strutting his stuff at the altar of St. Mary's Church of Ireland and surrounding Church of Ireland franchises in the Midlands. And prior to Nigel Foley Fisher's tenure as chairman of Wilson's Hospital. The position was held by another member of the Masonic Order, this time from King Harmon Masonic Lodge in Longford. I won't mention the name of this man who's in the frame here, uh, just out of respect because he recently died. Uh, this is clearly a case of Masonic nepotism dictating how the school is run, and this is approved of and signed off upon by Bishop Patricia Storey and all previous bishops who acted as patrons of the school. So in conclusion, with the Anglican Church, and in this case the Church of Ireland, constantly bending to the will and whims of man, and Freemasonry's precept to inculcate in its members the spirit of religious indifference and liberty, has therefore the Church of Ireland's uninterrupted appointment of a succession of Freemasons to run its schools, brought with it the precepts congruent with Freemasonry to be a pervasive influence in the running of Wilson's Hospital School reasonable questions, because it appears that Enoch Burke would gladly accept back his job in the highly unlikely event that it would be offered back to him, despite him being aware of the corruption rampant within the running of Wilson's and the obvious nepotism at the head of its board of management. And uh, just as an aside, 
all schools under the patronage and ethos of the Church of Ireland. Uh, the more notable ones being Villiers of Limerick, Kilkenny College, Bandon Grammar, King's Hospital, which by the way counts these two degenerates amongst its alumni, St Columbus, all have Freemasons on their boards of management and amongst their male teaching staff.